Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and continuing the topic in the thermal power station. Today we see what we see the cost minimum function as well as we talk about the objective function or the input function. So previously we discussed in the hydroelectric power station. So the thing of our importance was the discharge Q. The thing that we could play around with. We could alter it so that the, uh, that the, the variation with the discharge would do what would vary uh, the what the power generation right yes the power generation was a function of what was a function of the discharge q it was also a function of other parameters but the important one or the 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 one of great importance or that we could you know alter easily was uh, the discharge q similarly in the steam power station we would want we want such such a factor so what would that factor be so that factor is the heat that factor is the heat. You would say, right, because the, 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 the whole process is done by heat, right? So heat is the thing of prime importance. But the other thing is, uh, uh, heat comes from what? From the calorific value. So in terms of the calorific value, we'll describe the heat, right? And then what is the other thing is, uh, where does the heat come from? So the heat comes from fuel. And where does the fuel come from? So the fuel comes uh, from your pocket, right? So you have to look into your pocket for that. So which means the cost of the fuel is another important parameter. So while discussing the, the input function, so over in the hydro we talk about the discharges in the input function, whereas over here some say that this would be the cost of the fuel is important, some say no the heat is important, you could have a, a discussion on that. We say what, the book says what, that we are following over here, we will combine the two, we will combine the two also the heat in terms of the heat and the cost of the fuel right yes so i will just get going so in the hydro we talked about what in the hydro we talked about the discharge the discharge q so what do we have over here is in the thermal power station in, in the thermal power station we talk about the heat the heat value in terms of uh, h i would write and i would say the cost of the fuel as well the cost of fuel is of prime importance, right? Yes. And this is den uh, denoted by a small x. So the input function, we talk about an input function or this is also called an objective function. So the objective function is what? The objective function in this case is uh, denoted by a capital F and this is the product of the two h times x, right? Yes. Now, the thing is that things are non-linear. Things are non-linear. Why? Because we have multiple steps involved. We have multiple efficiencies involved. Boiler efficiency, thermal efficiency, mechanical to electrical, electri uh, uh, you know, uh, potential to kinetic, kinetic to potential, and this and that. Heat to mechanical, mechanical to electrical, right? So different efficiencies, different conversion involved. So the overall process, the overall process is non-linear right yes so what do we have for a non-linear equation for a non-linear process we have non-linear equation by non-linear uh, non polynomial right and nth degree polynomial is used to represent a non-linear equation which is of the form what y is equal to a naught plus a1 x plus a2 x squared plus up to plus you have a n x to the power n calculations are what assumptions based this is the beauty of science you can have assumptions you can have manipulations so the assumption is what all the electrical calculations transmission line calculations transformer efficiencies this and that so they're all efficiencies they are all assumptions right assumptions so we will assume it to the second order we'll assume it to the second order we'll neglect the higher order terms in this, these A0 are the constants, A1, A2, these are constant, X is the independent variable, Y is the dependent variable, where the constant decreases and decreases by a specific formula by division by factorial. These are mathematics things, you know it better than me. I would do A0 is the greatest and then it decreases by division by factorial. So we'll, we'll just do it uh, till the second order. So we'll, we'll have an A0 plus A1X plus A2X squared right yes so in this equation this is the equation with the help of which we will represent our hydro system as well as our thermal system 
so let's get into it so in a hydro system in a hydro system what do we have uh, in a hydro system y is q the discharge and x is the electrical power p so this implies what the equation would be that the discharge q is and and i would just give it alpha beta yes alpha beta so alpha plus beta times p plus gamma times p squared fine yes similarly for the thermal power station what do you have is for the thermal the y is the input function f and the x is again the p so i would have f is equal to alpha plus beta times p plus gamma times p squared now a point may arise in your question uh, uh, in your head that uh, over there i said that uh, x is independent variable and y is a dependent over here power is always the dependent variable so I, why have I, I have written it oppositely then so the thing is now these equations we are seeing as an operation engineer and an operation engineer the job is what the job is to calculate the amount of fuel calculate the cost of fuel for the amount of heat or the required discharge for the amount of power on the generation side the dependent variable is power but over here we are looking as an operational engineer we have to dispatch some power so that power is the load demand so that we will see as an independent variable now that that power would become our what according to that power we would we would calculate what we would calculate the cost of fuel we would calculate the amount of fuel so the power becomes independent and the cost and the heat and the discharge become the dependent variable is that fine it is so this is how we represent these equations now the minimization of cost let me see if we have something thermal power plant is usually treated as base load plants power requirement fuel power requirement combustion of fossil fuels in thermal chain reaction cost minimum function the important constituent of any power plant is thermal power plant is fuel its availability calorific value and cost of course however operational cost may be very high due to ever rising fuel cost in the market in order to obtain the cost model the actual output is electrical power the input may have controversies and this and that just read it out for yourself the objective function objective function f is equal to h times x the purpose is to minimize the cost h is the heat input yes h is the heat input and if you want me to write down the units so they have it over here is in mega btus per hour heat input is in mega btus per hour btus are the british thermal units uh, the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of water through one degree fahrenheit we've already seen this in the previous video i believe this is the definition and then the cost of fuel uh, would have what x is the cost of fuel in rupees per mega btus uh, x would have the rupees per mega btus this r i would generally call it as a rate per mega btus because over here if i'm talking about rupees uh, so somebody watching it in america would consider it to be dollars per mbtus similarly somebody watching this video in england would say this is a pound per mbtu so this would just be a general currency or a rate per mbtu whatever your a general currency right so which means that the objective function f the unit comes out to be the rate per hour rate per hour rate per hour yes yes sir so i talk about the cost minimum function now i talk about the cost minimum function of a thermal power plant cost minimum function okay what do i have consider uh of thermal power plant yes so consider what that you have a load demand you have a load demand that is pd 
allowed demand is what at a particular instance of time is p d at the generation side you have n number of units you have n number of generating units which means unit number one is generating power p1 unit number two is generating power p2 unit number three is generating power p3 up to the nth unit which is generating power pn for instance if you sum them all up you sum them all up p1 plus p2 plus p3 plus up to plus pn this would give you what this would give you the summation let's say i running from 1 to n pi so this gives you what this would you have to make it equal to the load demand you have to make it equal to the load demand yes now it should not be greater than that you should have you know you, you do not need to waste any power you do not have to waste any power you do not have to produce any extra power because it cannot be stored electrical power as transmitted has to be uh, as generated has to be transmitted it cannot be stored so you cannot waste why because you are spending a huge amount of capital on the fuel cost maintenance cost as well so you have to generate the minimum power that is required so just to meet the load demand so we are generating from n number of units to meet the load demand pd is that fine it is now we have what we have a lagrange function we have a lagrange function uh, or wait or and can i can i say that the total that the power demand i could say over here power demand minus the summation of all the generating sets this would be equal to zero isn't it it is it comes equal to zero but now we have a lagrange function involved we have a Lagrange function involved. Lagrange function. And what does this say? This is represented by a capital L of this sort. This is equal to F plus F is the input function lambda. Lambda is a simple multiplier and lambda multiplied with phi what is this phi lambda is just a simple constant multiplier i'll tell you later phi is what so lagrange says that this summation pd minus summation pi is equal to zero no he says what that put this equal to phi pd minus summation i running from one to n pi just put it equal to phi this is what lagrange says this is the definition of phi is that fine it is so what do you have what do you have is can i write uh, down uh, yes i believe i have one more step put these values in the lagrange function so the lagrange function l is equal to f plus lambda times pd minus the summation of the power generated i is that fine till here it is we have to generate the minimum power so as to meet the load demand only so for that what do we do we differentiate it and then for 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 the minimum we have to put that equal to zero because at minimum the slope is equal to zero right yes so differentiate it with respect to power so dl d p dl dp right yes this would be equal to df dp then you have a plus lambda times I would just put it inside uh, d 
D power demand PD over DP and then I have a minus uh, D the summation of the power generated with respect to the total power and this is it. So have a look now what do I have is DFDP would, would come over here. DF DP would come over here uh, plus lambda now the power demand with respect to P so the power demand at any particular instant of time if you are checking a weekly curve so for a particular day we are checking a monthly curve for a particular month you're checking a yearly curve for a particular month did I mix it up somewhere you are checking a load curve for any particular instant of time the load is constant the load demand is constant so which means a constant derivative would be zero and then you have a minus so have a look the summation of pi is what the summation of pi is the total power right the summation of the total power transmitted and dp is again the total power so dp with respect to dp is one so which means that this you have what minus of lambda so from here we have got the basic definition is that my df df with respect to uh, dp would come equal to lambda df with respect to dp would come equal to lambda is that fine it is it is worth mentioning that for generation scheduling on and I equated it to zero, right? I equated it to zero, so that is why it came like this. And why did I equate it to zero? So I needed the minimum generation for the minimum cost. Of course, I had to meet my load demand. Now this lambda is what? This is the incremental cost of electrical energy. Lambda is what? This is the cost of electrical energy. And the units are what? The units are rate per megawatt hours. Or also in terms of kilowatt hours you could say. Generally in megawatt hours because the generation is in a bulk amount. Right? Yes. So do I have any other thing to tell you over here? So you have what strategy, uh, average power minimization slope, minimum strategy for thermal, this is particular will help you minimize the cost of dispatch. This function will help you to minimize the cost of dispatch. Megabit use per megawatt, this function is in megawatts. Megabit use per megawatts, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Yes, fine, fine. I will write three points over here and we'll discuss it maybe in the upcoming videos over here. You may not understand it. Now, one thing, why is the load curve in the form of bars? Load is continuously changing. So the thing is that we talk about averages. That bar is a particular average of the total load sometimes. It is the average of the total loads. So that is why we just take the average value, we take a single value. Otherwise, the load curve is not meant to be that particularly straight graph, right? Yes. So over here, if I talk about is, if my df dp comes out to be equal to lambda. So this means the power being generated is lying at in the limits in, in an economical range in an economical range the economical range for the for the economic dispatch you have a minimum economic dispatch you have the maximum economic dispatch so if this condition is being satisfied the power dispatch that a unit is dispatching is lying in between the limits it is operating economically if this particular thing dfdp this comes less than or equal to lambda so this means the power that it is dispatching is or should be at the maximum limit 
you could also have vice versa we'll see it in the examples and similarly then you have the opposite thing if df dp is greater than or equal to lambda so the power that it is dispatching is minimum economical limit is that fine keep these points in your mind we will do what understand it in the examples video if not in the next maybe i'll have an example video where i will explain you'll get to it i finish this video over here i'll see in the next one with two examples we'll make it short till then take care goodbye